Stan Jabalisco here, uh, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, and also author of the book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. Uh, I am referring now to the fifth edition. If you happen to have edition number five, if you look on page 511 and page 512, it talks a little bit about ground systems for radio antennas. But I would like to go into a little more detail about the difference between electrical and radio frequency, or RF, ground systems. Now, an RF ground system is the type that you would use with a radio antenna to ensure optimum efficiency and optimum signal radiation. But in an electrical ground, also known as a direct current or DC ground, is an entirely different uh, type of system and it exists for an entirely different purpose. Um, generally speaking, in any electrical circuit, whether it use DC or common household alternating current at 60 hertz, a ground system exists for the purpose, uh, well, for two purposes. Number one, to ensure stability of circuit operation, to give the circuit a zero voltage reference point something that you can say okay we have 117 volts AC or we have plus 12 volts DC with respect to the zero voltage point which would be an electrical ground and the best type of electrical ground that you can possibly have would be if you lived in a place where the ground is laden with all kinds of conducting minerals and you pound a ground rod into the soil usually at least two or three meters long I believe eight feet or approximately 2.5 meters is the standard length in the United States and the diameter can range from three-eighths to five-eighths of an inch or so. A copper rod driven into the earth. Sometimes people will take a post hole digger. You know, the type that you dig to make a utility pole uh, hole. They'll dig a hole down about eight or nine or ten feet like that with a post hole digger and then pour rock salt down in there and then pour water down in there and then put their ground rod in that to improve the conductivity to the soil. Uh, just make sure you don't have a garden over your ground rod if you do that, all right? Or don't do it near trees or things like that because that salt will get into the soil and it will create trouble for uh, those plants. But that is a DC or AC utility ground That is the zero voltage reference, and uh, you'll find one of these in every good household's uh, utility system. And everything should be referenced to that electrical ground system. Besides providing a zero voltage reference for electrical equipment, appliances, electronic equipment, and all other manner of things, a good RF ground and ensuring that every piece of equipment that you have in your house is connected to a good, uh, pardon me, a DC or AC electrical ground system will reduce the probability of your getting a dangerous electrical shock. If, a, if an appliance happens to short circuit and develop a, a, a situation where the hot wire of the AC gets short circuited to the shell of the device, if the shell of the device or appliance is connected to an electrical ground, it'll trip the breaker, which is what the breaker is there for, to protect the equipment and to protect you, and it'll keep you from getting a shock, even if a small voltage should happen to appear there for any reason. 
Uh, similarly, in, your, in a motor vehicle, a boat, an aircraft, any kind of large uh, moving vessel, an electrical ground is connected to the frame of the vehicle. Say you have a, oh, some kind of a vehicle. I don't know what the heck kind of a vehicle this would be. Something uh, sure doesn't look like big number eight, though. Let's call it big number zero. <laughs> okay, here's your vehicle. There's you. It's a metal vehicle, presumably, and the electrical ground then can be assumed to be the shell of that vehicle, which hopefully is welded to itself in a number of places and then you have your little automotive battery and your electrical system usually 12 volts the negative terminal of that system goes to your electrical ground and the positive terminal goes to all of the various electronics and then the 12 volts or 12.6 volts that a battery provides or 13.8 to 14 volts that the alternator provides positive DC voltage with respect to ground which is the shell of the vehicle so that is what you use for your electrical reference in a case like that now a radio frequency ground exists for an entirely different purpose a radio frequency ground the symbol is the same a ground symbol like that a symbol is the same but that's pretty much where the similarity ends. Suppose that you have a vertical antenna. Suppose that it's 17 feet long. I have an MFJ whip antenna for my vehicle, big number eight, which extends to 17 feet long or tall, which uh, comprises one quarter of a wavelength at 14 megahertz and that antenna will work very well as what they call a quarter wave vertical provided that it is blessed with a good radio frequency ground now the frame of the vehicle serves to some extent as a radio frequency ground but it's not a really very good radio frequency ground why do we need a radio frequency ground well we need a radio frequency ground so that the current that flows in this antenna has a return path in effect has somewhere to go as it flows here somewhere to in effect exist in a mirror image form I'm not really it's a very difficult concept to get across but if you were to simply feed a quarter wave vertical antenna like this with coaxial cable here's the symbol for coaxial cable by the way if you were to simply feed the base of that 17 foot whip with coaxial cable the shield of the cable is this that's the outer braid, the cylindrical tubular braid. The center conductor is that uh, wire right there in the that passes through that kind of ellipse there. If you were to just connect it like that and leave the shield of your coax free, this system would have nothing to operate against. Now, that's a sort of a... Uh, a turn of a phrase or a, an, an expression it's jargon against this antenna can't operate against anything it's sort of like if you were in a little rowboat and you're coming up to the dock and you push off of that rowboat and you jump for the dock and you land in the water because that rowboat slides out from underneath you you didn't have anything effective to push against now, if that boat had been anchored, say, to the bottom of the lake, or if it had been a fixed object that was 
uh, literally not movable like the boat would be on the surface of the water. You could jump off that boat and land on the dock, but because you have nothing to put your force against, you land in the water and you and it doesn't. It just is like trying. It's like spinning your wheels, as it were. And the same thing will happen with a quarter wavelength unbalanced antenna. They call it unbalanced because it's not symmetrical. It doesn't com comprise two symmetrical pieces. It's it's lopsided. It's unbalanced in that sense. What you need to do is you need to have some kind of a good radio frequency ground. And one way to get that is to simply extend, if you're high up enough above, um, enough above the ground, extend another 17-foot wire or tube straight down from the shield of the coax. If you're not that high above the ground, you might extend several of them out more or less horizontally to serve as a counterbalance or counterpoise to this radiating element, this 17-foot radiating element. That is the radio frequency ground. And of course, if you live in a place where the soil conducts almost perfectly, you could conceivably just drive a ground rod into that soil and the earth itself would serve as an RF ground, a radio frequency ground. And it would also, by the way, happen to serve as a good DC ground too. Anyway, the radio frequency ground is generally connected, is generally associated with antenna systems and radio and wireless communications equipment. Whereas the um, DC or AC, 60 hertz AC electrical ground, exists as an absolute standard of voltage reference and to protect you in particular against electric shock. So we hope that that will clarify some of the difference between a radio frequency ground and a DC ground. And for all intents and purposes, direct current is the same thing as 60 hertz alternating current. That frequency is so low that for, in terms of wireless frequency operation, you could consider them more or less the same type of phenomenon. So hopefully that'll clear that up. Um, I recommend you get the book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. I, I recommend it because, uh, well, it's received pretty good reviews for the most part. People do seem to think it's pretty good. Uh, and uh, I've, I've really thrown a lot of myself into it too, so <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Stan Jibalisco, signing off for now. I've yammered at you long enough. So long.